Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and it is Friday, September 13th, 2019. My 14th vlog, man. Pretty damn cool. I love it. Um, sorry I missed you guys last week. I was in Aruba. Had to get away from my one year anniversary with my wife and uh, if you guys have never been to Aruba, uh, definitely a cool place to go to uh, in the Caribbean. It's uh, from New York. It's only about a four or five hour flight and uh, you can get a straight direct flight from there and I got to tell you Aruba you're guaranteed great weather you are guaranteed uh, it's always sunny it never rains and it's out of the hurricane belt so a great time to go to Aruba is of course around September time because pretty much all the families kids are back to school and stuff so it's not as crowded uh, just a beautiful sight if you guys ever need to get away and you're guaranteed that it's not going to rain and you're not gonna have a bad weather uh, trip uh, there's really uh, you there's no gambling involved. Uh, it's just perfect weather all the time. So great food, great beaches, yada yada. So I had a great time, got a chance to reset, and now I'm back in business here. And uh, Friday the 13th, anybody watching Jason tonight? I think there's marathons with Jason Friday the 13th. My wife was like, oh, I wish I didn't have to work. I could sit home and watch Jason. I'm like, oh, come on, you know? <laughs> so, but uh, anyways, be sure to like, subscribe, Hit that notification bell and let's keep this content rolling. Let's keep you giving, let's keep me giving you guys the VW uh, news and the trends and the, the updates, the tips. Uh, and also for the price of a cup of coffee, you can submit to us a small PayPal donation. Whatever you guys can afford is, uh, we appreciate it. We definitely thank you. The link is in the description below. And again, keeps me coming out here week after week uh, to give you guys the content. And um, speaking of coffee, do not forget, my wife and I are selling Mutts and Bugs coffee. It's a whole bean, two bag, uh, I'm sorry, two bag, two pound bag of coffee. Uh, really cool, you'd have to grind it up, of course, if you have a grinder, or you could take it somewhere to be, uh, to be ground up. Um, so yeah, uh, we have espresso, we have Colombian, and we have Guatemalan. Uh, and again, proceeds, uh, small proceeds goes towards helping a sheltered animal, uh, an animal in need, an animal needs a home, uh, definitely animals that have been abused that could really use a good loving home guys uh, like I said I, I really don't make much money on this we're just doing it for the love of the animals and I hope you guys can help us out with that so uh, really cool there all right so what's the top oh and in just over two weeks September 29th Sunday September 29th is my annual New York air-cooled vintage Treffen classic car show uh, guys, please come out with your dubs. Bring anything air-cooled, Porsche, VW. Uh, I would even love it. I wouldn't care if I even saw an Isetta there or, or something. Anything air-cooled is really cool. And uh, we got a beautiful spot there on the river, uh, right on the water. And uh, it's a great location. It's 25 bucks to get in, but spectators are free, so you can pack your car full of people, and it's only 25 bucks, as opposed to some other shows out there that are. You know, $15 to get in, but each person is then 15 bucks as well. So, uh, and it goes to a good cause. Again, I don't make any money on this, guys. This goes to a good cause. It's called Cruising for Kids, and it always then helps out a kid that's in need. Uh, so, a kid that's got cancer, something like that. Uh, every year, they get goes towards a really good cause. So, uh, it'd be great to see you guys there again. September Sunday, September 29th. Rain date is the sixth, the following Sunday. So, links again in the description below. Go right to my website. All right, so now that that's out of the way, <laughs> uh, the two topics I want to talk about today is, I don't know if you guys have seen the BuzzFeed, and I was getting it while I was in Aruba, I get a lot of Google alerts when anything Volkswagen related is, is uh, um, online that comes up a new story, uh, but VW is now doing something where they can convert your old Beetle to electric, and I saw this come up. I mean, it's just after you know they announced that the you know the the new the other the the, the newest generation of Beetles was ending. You know, the Beetle I had one. I had a 2013, 2016 Beetle. Um, they're ending that style, and everyone's like, "Oh, what's Volkswagen going to do? Where's the you know the next Beetle if there's ever going to be one?" So the first little step they're doing it looks like is convert your old Beetle. So they show an image, I think, of like a 70 Super Beetle or something that's then converted to electric. And it seems like what they're doing is un unlike what uh, Zelectric has done, 
um, and some other shops uh, across the globe that are converting. They're not using the the Beetle uh, tranny and drivetrain. Sorry, you see a shadow on my face here. I'm stuffed at a school bus. Um, so they're actually going to be making uh, the motor like right on the rear axle. Uh, so it's all incorporated into the rear axle which look pretty cool and that's what they do I think I guess with a lot of electric cars today it's all right into the wheels and so now your engine compartment is like a trunk there's nothing in there so you can use that as a trunk um, I'm gonna have the link to this story in the description below it, it, I saw it on Jalopnik uh, and it's it's across you know just do a Google search and you'll see it's across many many sites the story uh, which is pretty cool and then they're gonna make your chassis the the battery so that they'll incorporate the batteries into the chassis and it's very similar to what they're doing already today with you know the lithium batteries and the new ID3 Volkswagen that's coming out which is all electric I think that's coming out in you know, I think 2020 in Europe and then 2021 here in America if I'm not mistaken don't quote me on that that's what I think is happening um, so they're it looks like they're just kind of incorporating that technology into like an older Beetle they have not mentioned anything about price point so I don't know what it's going to cost to do this conversion. I know if you did go with the uh, electric bug, it was kind of costly. You know, my first time I, I contacted them, and th those are cool guys, man. I really give them props for doing what they're doing. Um, they actually bought a bug of mine, a '64, you know, several years ago, and converted that uh, to electric. Um, and I, I really like what they did. They really make it look nice, uh, but it's pricey. I mean, you're talking a good 25, 30 grand just to get the kit and I think to do the conversion and stuff. Some of those restorations are into the $70,000, $80,000 mark to do a restoration and conversion. Um, so pretty interesting. Definitely take a look at that link and I want to know your thoughts and see what you think. And uh, you know, if you did want to convert your Beetle, your old Beetle to electric, um, it just seems to be the way of the future, guys. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Um, and then on another note, I saw some other listings online. If you guys, uh, I go to bringatrailer.com a lot. I, I get the email updates when anything Volkswagen gets listed on their website. That is a great auction site. I think they're doing very well there. Um, and I think what I what I really like about that website is that there there's basically a vetting process in a way uh, before you can put your car for sale. And no one can just put their car for sale. They're going to basically go and you got to submit to them that you want to list your car for sale send them pictures history bio whatever and they're going to evaluate what they think your car is worth and if you don't agree with their price point they're just not going to put it up for sale uh, I thought that was pretty cool about bringing a trailer and it really cuts down on the scam uh, bidders and, and, and auctions that you see would see say on eBay eBay is uh, been notorious for that uh, I mean even when I was doing it in the beginning um, there was a ton of non-paying bidders and when eBay passed that one rule where now uh, the bidder um, or actually I'm sorry the seller uh, can't leave a negative feedback on a buyer say if he bails out or something um, there's really no recourse there's no pressure on the the buyer uh, to fulfill their action you know I got a lot of you know non-paying bidders and then they call me up and say oh I made a mistake oh it was my grandson that bid for me some BS and uh, that, that hurts you because then when you go to relist on eBay it looks bad then people are asking you know why why are you relisting what happened it just it's like almost a one-shot deal on eBay unless you wait another few months and then relist it and uh, everyone forgets about it but so bring a trailer um, is a really great site and you know I would definitely check them out if you're looking to sell something um, but they had a, a, this past a week or so, they've had, then it's, I think one is still up for sale now, and I posted it on my Facebook page. A uh, 79 Beetle convertible, unrestored, I don't know, original 170 something miles on it. So the thing's never been driven. The thing's never been, I mean, it's been rolled in and out of the dealership or something. So I've spoken about this before where dealers back in the day were buying these, uh, the last of the Beetles thinking like a day like today like they can come around and finally sell it and make some coin and uh, so I mean I think when I first went to the auction and God there was still six days left the car was already over thirty seven thousand dollars so pretty cool um, that's still the very hot 
side of the market right now are these unrestored examples, very low mileage, um, you know, really rare examples, I guess, you know. But again, it's like that argument, you get that car, do you drive it? Do you just look at it? Um, you know, it's one of those things where like, you'd be afraid to drive it, you'd be afraid to put more miles on it because you would think, uh, you know, am I devaluing it, you know? I don't know. Uh, it's one of those things, but like when I picked up that 65 Ruby Red out of Wappinger's Falls, if you guys have ever seen that video, when I went to go see that car and it had 8,000 original miles on it, really remarkable. I mean, just the smell and everything, the feel of it. I mean, it was just like dealer, dealer friendly, dealer fit when you sat in it and everything, just everything about it. And it's like, yeah, do you drive it, you know, to keep putting miles on it? I mean... I guess even if you did, you know, a couple few hundred miles a year or something, it's not going to hurt it. I mean, even 10,000 miles, 15,000 miles, 20,000 miles, original miles is still very, very, very low. But uh, very cool info that I saw when I came back. And uh, so definitely check those out. I'll have the links in the description below, of course. And I want to know your guys' thoughts. Um, you know, see what you think. But that's the hot market. I mean, the unrestored examples. It's only original ones. That's that argument. You know, and of course, then the exceptional restorations. You know, cars that really stand out from the crowd is what's going to uh, really escalate the price of uh, the Beatles. Uh, so, you know, you know, original ovals or rag tops, things like that. But really good color combinations and and things like that <coughs> really help. So. But, uh, all right, guys, short vlog today. I'm uh, just still driving into work. But please, uh, again, forget, uh, don't forget to <laughs> like and subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell. And, um, again, two weeks from this Sunday is uh, September 29th, my New York air-cooled vintage trip. I hope to see you guys there. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.